Why are some supplements so expensive? The answer to this question is going to turn into an endless video series because there is a ton to talk about. But this question came up regarding a D3K2 supplement that I recommended last week, so we'll start there. Vitamin K2 comes in a few different forms, but the most bioavailable and the longest lasting form is called MK7. MK7 is naturally made by bacterial fermentation, and this can happen in our GI tract or in fermented foods. And MK7 is available in two what we call geometric isomers. That's sort of like it comes in a right-handed version and a left-handed version, called cis and trans. But only the trans isomer is biologically active. The cis form doesn't do anything in our body. When it's synthesized in the lab, the trans and cis versions can be produced. Which means if you have an MK7 that was synthesized in a laboratory setting, then it is possible and even likely that some of that MK7 is not biologically active. And as you might have guessed, synthesizing MK7 in a lab is quite a bit cheaper than deriving it from bacterial fermentation. So that's definitely a way that you can make a cheaper supplement, but it's cheaper for a reason. In the K2D3 supplements that I recommend, the MK7 is only derived from bacterial fermentation, and it is guaranteed to only have the biologically active trans isomer of MK7. And if this conversation totally blew your mind and you have no idea what I'm talking about, yeah, that's sort of the point. That's why when you're looking for a quality supplement, you need to work with a trusted professional who's dedicated their entire life to studying this stuff.